Hello everybody, and welcome to episode 6 of the Elden Ring series. And in this episode, oddly enough, I think we're going to be heading back to one of the first sites of grace. Literally, like the first site of grace. And doing a little special dungeon that they have, all so we can hunt down the golden seeds. Anything to increase the amount of flasks that we have. We're going to be interacting with this imp statue. What is the site of grace even called? The Stranded Graveyard. That's where we are. So this thing takes two stone sword keys to interact with and to open up that fog gate. Let's craft some more fire pots just to have them. And now that there's no fog gate here, we can do this vaguely annoying dungeon. So we're going to jump off here and do a little light attack on the way down just to reduce the stagger and then run through a field of poison. How pleasant. Everybody likes to spend their Sunday running through fields of poison. And now we're going to stand here menacingly waiting for something that something we don't want to touch that it will kill us instantly very instantly and we're gonna run down here hugging this wall and jump right in here to the left and stab this man with a crossbow who's oddly glowy and while this thing is passing by we'll come down another section or so to the right kill this other man with a crossbow this episode is very anti-crossbow. Oh, I guess there's a third one. I forget about this guy every time. Stab him to death, and now while we watch this weird chariot roll uphill, we are going to run down to the right and fall. Following down this ramp area, because that chariot will follow us if we're too slow. We're gonna grab this item in the middle of this bridge and then turn around looking at this wall. We're gonna fall off of it down onto this pot. <laughs> Very specific route. And you can hear the chariot above us passing by. Luckily it can't follow us off of the bridge. Wow, this imp is tanky. That also might be because I still have the bleed on my rapier. Yeah, it probably is. It's not helping at least. But there's going to be two imps here and you want to kill them as quickly as possible. Don't worry too much about taking damage. They might hit somewhat hard, but it's not going to be anything too crazy. You can stagger them with every single hit. Hence why this little toothpick I'm using is just making the imps stand in place every time I touch them. They're toothpick allergic. Now we're going to run down here to this doorway, equip your bow, and get ready to shoot it. There's going to be something interesting right there. You see that pillar? That's going to spew fire if you try to go down the hallway. So you're going to want to kill it before that happens. And by kill it, I just mean shoot an arrow at it, and it'll drop down like that. Then you get back to readying your melee. On the right side down this hallway, there will be an imp. He's just standing there menacingly. This is actually a good time, this dungeon, to back up and open your inventory and use the lantern that we bought in episode 4. This will stay active until you die, so uh, I guess just don't die. But now we can see the imp, kind of, just a little bit. Now he looks more menacing, and we are going to stab him to death. Pleasantly. Just a pretty standard internal massage. Now that we're done massaging the inside of that imp, we... <laughs> what the fuck am I saying? We're gonna go ahead and head down this way. There's two imps in this room, so you're gonna shoot this one with a bow. Just to lure him out. This is half the reason we wanted the bow. The other half is that we, we'll actually use it to kill things later on. But for now, it's just a luring tool to make sure you don't have to engage multiple enemies at once. Then you stab repeatedly. You don't really have to have the shield up while you're doing this with imps, as long as there's not multiple of them, because the rapier itself takes virtually no stamina while swinging it, and they stagger from a light breeze. So we're going to come in here, and there's going to be another imp up here on the doorway. There he is. Now we're going to stagger him once, and then just start swinging wildly until he's dead. Hit him with that penetrative power. Oops, I stopped swinging. <laughs> For some reason, I thought I could hold the attack button, but I can't. That's a lie. Grab this item in the corner of this room. Lightning Grease. Not to be mistaken with the 80s film. Wait, Grease Lightning wasn't the 80s, was it? <laughs> was it 90s? I don't know. It's an old film. Go Grease Lightning. Now this next room is going to be very interesting. That's where we came from. This is where we go. That's where we came from. God and I, Joe. Now we've got some interesting guests in this room, and our plan is to run past them. 
that's it. We're just, we're just gonna bank on running past them. We're gonna cross this bridge with our shield up and grab this little glowy item right at the tip of my pointy, pointy little helmet. See that glowing item right there? Yeah, we're gonna grab that. That's an amazing accessory. And then we're gonna run back across the bridge and fall down there. See that little lip? So we're going across, grabbing an item, coming back, and falling down, while hoping that nothing terrible will happen. Running, 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 coming across here, grab this, run back, just don't look at the things, don't look directly at them. Now we're gonna come over here and just roll. Oh dear, did I? I just barely made it. So basically, that's how a professional does that, for sure. And I don't know why, but they can't jump down to us, so we're just gonna jump down again into this, you know, pool of blood. And there's a door, an archway, some stairs over here, and a nice little button. Stand on the button and it'll activate an elevator. Upsy daisy. And once we reach the top, we're going to come up these stairs. What, what is that sound? Oh, right, it's that thing. We're gonna come up these stairs and crouch just for a moment because there's a guy over there. You might have some difficulties with him. You just have to watch your stamina. Do the standard block and poke, which I'm about to do. And when it seems like your stamina is getting low, just roll away from him. Because he tends to do a lot of his attacks while standing in place. So we'll grab this item here and get ready to do the pokey poke thing. There we go. Now he's got that. Now we roll away. Ouch. Maybe not <laughs> that early. He's doing some strange asserting his dominant stomping thing. We're gonna roll away and chug some OJ. Watch out. If you try to retreat from him, you will either A, do this attack, or he'll teleport at you. And yes, you can backstab him. Plenty fine. That's when you want to backroll, when he starts doing this spinny tornado stuff. Because he will destroy your stamina using like a three or four hit combo. You don't want to be involved in that. That's the one. You can usually block at least one or two hits from that, and then you want to clear away. With lots of distance between you and him. But that's pretty much it. Now that we've killed him, we have a chance to just clear this chariot out of the dungeon and get a great bow that we'll probably never use. But if we move over to the left side of this platform, you'll see that the chariot kind of follows us. It moves off to this ramp in front of us. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't know the timing for this at all. But if we aim our camera up, you can see there's three pots hanging from very thin ropes. And if you shoot these pots, or at least the ropes to the pots, they'll drop. And if they fall on top of the chariot, the chariot goes boom boom and then you don't have to deal with the chariot anymore so i think what we're going to do is try and shoot the pots when the chariot hits the wall up here we'll feel the shake in our screen and then we'll shoot the pot like this shooting now oh, i missed <laughs> i gotta aim higher we'll do the same thing we'll try it when the screen shakes and see how it goes right now screen shaking firing and the pot has missed terribly so we would have to do it while he's halfway up We'd have to visually confirm that he's turning around and coming up, which is right about now. Now we shoot another arrow. There we go. I don't know how I did that, but I did it. Sorry. <laughs> I don't have any neat tricks to tell you. I'm sure you could find one online if it's not me, but I really don't know the trick. Usually by the time you've shot all three pots, you've had plenty of chances, so... You'll figure it out. I know. Quite the walkthrough. Quite the guide. Is this where we fell prior? It is. That's the broken pot. But if you can destroy that thing, you don't have to deal with the chariot for the rest of the dungeon. Which is, of course, a major convenience. If you still failed to break the chariot, just continue to run through the dungeon using these side pockets. Oh, hi, buddy. And the side pockets tend to occasionally... I'd say there's about a 50-50 chance that they'll have an enemy in them. Now, as you come down here, there's going to be a split to the left and a split to the right. We're going to go right, because this is a dead end, but it has loot, and we want the loot, obviously. We'd rather not have to come back through this dungeon. It's going to be a handful of these guys with crossbows and a handful with, well, swords and boards. Probably be easier to kill the melee boys first. Just keep them at an angle where they're in front of the crossbow dudes, so that if the crossbow dudes shoot at you, they'll be hitting the shield. It's okay if your guard gets broken and you take a few hits. These guys don't really hit that hard. They're not really the concern for this dungeon, and you're only ever going to have to fight them once, because we kill them and then we never have to take this path again. I believe that's actually the end of our little ghost crossbowman. However, at the end of this tunnel, 
is yet another one of those stronger ghost warriors. If you have to, heal up, prepare yourself, do whatever you need to do to get ready. I personally suggest starting the fight out with a mighty shot. Hit him with the pew pew. Try to sneak in maybe two more before the fight actually initiates. And now you've got him almost down to half health. Now personally, I think this guy is far more tolerable than the other one because his attacks are slower, more choreographed, and a little bit more obvious. And he does less stamina damage. And sometimes he breathes fire. <laughs> but it doesn't do much damage if you have your shield up, so you can just strafe around him and stab him in the back. Now what he drops is called the Dragon Communion Seal. This is a sacred seal, a faith type item that actually scales with arcane. So if you're running an arcane build, this can be insanely valuable. This is actually one of the strongest seals in the game. I think it's like second or third in terms of topped out damage when you max out arcane. So it's very good. It also has a very small benefit. Boost dragon communion incantations. So if you're just running a dragon breath type build, it's very good. I guess the only other thing is that it weighs nothing, but most of the sacred seals are like half a pound, so that doesn't mean too much. Now after going through the entire dungeon, we're gonna have to chug another Estus Flask. Now we're going to be heading back, because well, that's a dead end, down this ramp, and then just continue forward down through here. There's gonna be a few more of those ghosty boys, we're going to eliminate them, and then we have a boss fight. Here we are. Again, it's okay if you take damage from them, it's not going to be the end of the world. Actually, there's a little platform here to the left, is there anything relevant here? No, just a platform. Ignore everything. Grab this item, what is that, Grave Glove Ward? We can use that to upgrade our Spirit Ashes, so if you want your wolves to be stronger, tankier, etc., then you can use that later. We'll have to do some things to get it rolling. Oh dear, because <laughs> I was talking, I wasn't paying attention to my stamina. Whoopsie. Well, just another example of how this build is kind of busties, because I have loads of health and tankiness. I'm able to make huge mistakes in front of groups of enemies and still survive. Which is pretty convenient, but we are down yet another flask because of that. So we've got five left, but now we are at the bottom here. That's the last of the ghosty boys, and this is a stake of America. It serves as a sort of respawn checkpoint, so if we die again, we'll come right back here with all of our flasks and wondrous physics. So, we don't have to worry too much about dying against this boss. And the boss we're about to fight is one that we're probably going to come across relatively commonly through the series. So what we're going to do is, of course, chug our flask of wondrous physics for that minor damage increase of 10 strength and the health recovery, and now we pick a fight with the ulcerated tree spirit who have immediately knocked my ass over. Now these things, oddly enough, are pretty easy to deal with if you just stick to their side. Even better if you have a shield. Yeah, if you just keep your shield up and you stick to this thing's side, I usually do the right, but you can do right or left. Pick your poison. The only dangerous move that they can do is one where they start lunging around. It'll be very choreographed. And it is a grab, so you're going to want to roll. The timing isn't too strict either, so just be ready for that. Not this one, that's just a strange flop. This, however, is a breath attack, and when he does this, you can sneak in many hits. If you're not stuck inside of his tail like I was. <laughs> With the health recovery flask, or wondrous physic, the tear thing, this is actually surprisingly simple. Surprisingly simple. Here's the grab. That's the one. I'm gonna take it to the face just to see if it's actually going to kill me at this HP or not. Now it's only about half my health, which means we can use all of our flasks for that if we really want to. If we want to go truly zero IQ. Here comes a minor spaz, and we're going to avoid the grab this time. But because of the health recovery, I think I could have just taken that to the face too. Now we got a bleed proc. Neat. Oh. There we go. Sometimes he'll just explode with golden glowiness. But again, it'll take out less than half of your HP, so just always top up when you hit around half HP, and you can take a lot of these hits that are harder to avoid. If you have your shield up, you'll barely take any damage. Here comes another grab. He always signifies it with a roar, so be ready for that. He's doing more fire breath. Here comes more spazzing. 
It's a little hard to track what he's doing sometimes, but the trick really is just keep your shield up and walk toward and to the right, and you'll avoid the vast majority of his attacks. Well, we seem to have staggered him, so I'm going to go ahead and stab him in his little ulcerated eyeball. Yikes, you've been penetrated. Once he's done the exploding thing, he's about to do it again, I'm going to block. You can see right there, it will drain all of your stamina, but the damage to your health is virtually nothing. But once he's done the exploding thing, that strange self-destruct AoE thing, he will start doing little bits of holy damage when you block his attacks. But again, that barely matters. And after we beat him, we get apparently like 15,000 souls. Maybe he's actually supposed to be later on in the game, but... Whatever. We got a golden seed, and one of the better spirit ashes. Banished Knight Oleg. We'll probably replace the dogs with him. Can we afford to? No, we need 100 FP to summon him, so I guess we won't use it yet. How much do we even have? 78. We would need like 4 or 5 levels into... I forgot what the stat was called. Focus? Will? Wisdom? Make a wisdom saving check. What is the stat called? Mind. Mind. The skill that exclusively governs... FP, how much mana you have. Anybody who's not running a mage build, putting points in a mind is almost heretical. It's a bad idea. But once you kill that thing, and again, there was a stake of Merica right beforehand. So if you die, no sweat off your back. You can just try it again. Once you get the rhythm down for that, you'll be able to handle the rest of those moving forward in the series because the mechanics are basically the same. And yes, there will be more of them. More of those and the big baby bird. So we're going to put these points into our vigor. This gets us all the way up to 30. We now have 994 health, and that's not including the boosts from other things that we've gotten. Speaking of which, we go into our equipment. The thing that was surrounded by the many armed boys on the bridge was called an Erd Tree's Favor. We could have equipped this before the boss fight, actually. What this does, as it explains here, raises maximum HP, stamina, and equip load. And I think it's by 5% each, something like that. But it's pretty nice. So if we look at it, we're gaining 45 HP, 7 stamina. That's actually surprisingly big. That's like 3 endurance levels. And 3.1 pounds of equip load. Pretty good, honestly. Later on, we'll get stronger versions of this. There's an Erd Tree's Favor plus 1 and 2. But with that change, can I equip any more of Bernie Boy's stuff? No? No, no Bernie equipment for me. Fine, I see how it is. It's just the life we live. Now that we've been sufficiently sidetracked for two episodes, I think it's about time we start going through the Stormvale Castle. So we're going to fast travel to the Stormvale Main Gate, Site of Grace. Now once you get here, there's a few options. First things first, we're going to start at the Site of Grace. I'm going to look at this wall right here, head down some stairs. Oh, well, for a calling finger remedy. Might even just edit that out. Those things are just free. They're everywhere. But what we're going to want to do is come into this door on the left. Interact with this creepy looking fella who's too tall for his own good. Let him yammer his little ass off and skip everything he has to say. Personally, I choose no. I'll use the main gate whenever he presents this option because that gives you access to two different methods through the castle. So we're going to tell him no. I don't want your help. You're creepy and you smell weird. And then we're going to walk up to the main gate. And then he's going to shout like that. The gates open the gates. And this door is going to open. And now we're going to walk away. Now we have two different options. We can either A. Take some ballista to the face. Or B. Take a sneaky path to the left that's long and arduous. Personally, I like going through the main gates. Especially with a build like this. We're practically made for that. So we're going to grab these items. And we're going to start getting shot at soon. There it is. Oh yeah. There goes my stamina. So we're going to run here. Basically just hugging the left and trying to zigzag a little bit. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Yeah, it hurts. A lot. We're going to jump up here and start rolling. We're going to want to come up to the side of these rocks. Yup, yup. There's a doorway. Once you enter through the gate, you come up to the rocks to the left. You enter this doorway. Which gives you cover from the ballista. And more importantly, what's this? Golden Room 5? Neat. More importantly, there's a site of grace right here. So we are in the room above creepy tall smelly guy. So what we did was essentially enter through the gates right there. Ooh, ballista. <laughs> then we ran through the gates up that way and to the left into this door. Go ahead and touch some grass and get my health back. I believe there's an item back here to this doorway. Yeah, commoner's simple garb. We're not going to be wearing it for people who want to roleplay as 
weird smelly guy down there. Now we are going to sprint out this door and then hug the wall to the left, going up those stairs. We might still take ballista shots. If you die, it's okay. Life goes on. But not in real life, only in the video game. Once you get up the stairs, come over here and boom, you have cover. The ballista cannot rotate this far, so you're in the clear. I don't know why the enemies aren't chasing me. I think I was just right in front of them, but that's fine. That was what? This guy. Shoot him with my bow. If you just strafe with a bow, <laughs> these guys have a really hard time hitting you. So you're just strafing here, and then the crossbow bolt just whiffs. The idea is to wait for them to shoot, and then you lose your arrow. Unless you want to just go up there and swing at him, but you might piss off the other guys. So personally, this is my method. And now we're going to sneak up and attack this guy. The idea is to eliminate all of these guys on the ballista here. Smithing stone too? Wait, they can drop that? Since when? What the? I'll come down here and kill Torch Boy, because apparently he noticed all that noise. Sorry, I was pinpricking your friend. Now I'll do it to you too. I got an exile hood. Why was that like blue or purple? It doesn't do anything, it's just rare, I guess. So we've got two more on the ballasted down here. The Smithing Stone 2 has an actual pickup. Good. Let's sneak attack this guy. And then we'll take this guy on mano y mano by pinpricking him from behind the shield. Death be a thousand toothpicks. Now we're gonna take our bow out and probably just try to take this guy out in one shot using the mighty shot. Oh, uh, we failed. Start jump shotting then. There we go. One more. And yes, you can jump and shoot with your bow at the same time, which gives you mobility. If I wanted to, I could aim my bow that way and shoot while locked onto something while jumping away. It gives you some mobility, similar to jump attacks with melee weapons. If you have a short bow, it's even better. Now that that's done, we can make our way down here and start clearing out the rest of the rubble. Because there shouldn't be any more ballista. It's just these guys. Just take out Torch Boy because the fire can potentially damage you through the shield. Or at least it'll do a small amount. Piddly amounts, but something. Now killing these guys isn't a bad idea. Apparently they drop mushrooms, I didn't know that. It's not a bad idea because they have a chance to drop smithing stone too, which is relatively oddly uncommon. Yeah, we got a big man with an axe here. Oh, I dropped my shield for no reason. Not very like me. I'm just gonna stab him to death. No thoughts had empty style. <laughs> this is the most brutish method I've ever used to get through here. Oh, I am getting a little low on HP. I'll back up and chug. There we go. Oh, it's because there was a guy behind me shooting a crossbow. If I stand behind this wall, they should slowly approach me. Should. Maybe? No, they're just gonna sh shoot the wall. <laughs> One of them is approaching, so we'll take him out. Oh no, there was two of them approaching. Good. Just continue to stab them all to death. And get back behind the wall, get our stamina back, and now we'll just do a nice little last hoorah. Try to line them up so that if one is shooting at you, he'll still hit the shield. Always try to keep your enemies in one direction. The second you let them flank you, you're gonna start getting bopped. Now we're gonna clear out the rest of these enemies. There's a specialty enemy over there, and he's going to be annoying to deal with. See, there's three of these guys, so we are going to try to lure one over with a bow, like so. Yeah, the other guys do look over, like, yo, what the hell is that? But they won't chase you, unlike the one that you shot. Pew pew the other small guy. Oh, I missed. Why? I gotta craft more arrows. Maybe I'll do that after I kill these guys. I only have 35 left. But I shot you in the face. Why aren't you, like, aggressing? What is wrong with you? Oh, Axeman heard that. Guess we'll just quickly poke this guy to death then. Now we'll handle Axeman. He attacks very slow and usually only one or two times in a row. Bars. So you can usually just take your time blocking and stabbing. Now we're gonna come over here and deal with... You can see behind that pillar, there is a special little something. Imagine a lion, but with a blade taped to its arm. That's what we're fighting. Now the only downside to these guys, you can sword and board them, but they don't really stop moving. You're gonna get nauseous, most likely. You do want to hit in between their attacks, so when they're about to attack, you attack. And always take a moment to back up and recover your stamina when he's just standing there for a bit. It's not too bad, it's just not particularly pleasant either. Just in between the attacks, drop your shield to get better stamina regen. <laughs> I do look forward to getting a- oh, I guess that was just a weird angle. I do look forward to getting a better rapier. There are ones that have better range. This one is, uh, about as long as your pinky nail. Huh. 
Sometimes the lion just conveniently misses. We're gonna go ahead and penetrate him. Poor fella. Didn't stand a chance. Somber smithing stone one, which is alright. Beast blood and old fag. The items aren't too crazy. Anything up over here where he was hanging out? Is there special loot? I don't see any. We'll check the other side. I don't typically come over and kill this guy. I just, I don't know. It's curious. At some point, we might get the Godric Great Rune, so it's a good idea to grab this. You run through the gate that the lion was guarding will find this site of grace. If you, personally, have lost a lot of health, you can feel free to touch it and retry the area. Worst case scenario, you end up with more souls and you can just level up until the area is more manageable, or until you just happen to get that right run. However, the hard part really isn't what we just dealt with. By the way, I don't think the lion responds. Pretty sure he doesn't. The hard part is up here. We need more arrows. Can I craft more? No, I can't. I don't think I have. These are great arrows. Unequip those. Do I have a crossbow? No. I do have a great bow, but I can't really equip it. Interesting. I had planned to do this with a bow. We're gonna have to use a lot of mighty shots. The plan is to walk up these stairs over to the left here. I'm gonna climb up here and kill this guy holding a torch. Ouch. <laughs> that only hurt a little bit. You, know, you like fire pots? I have some of those too. Ha <laughs> ha. Nerd. Actually, that's a good point. I could just use fire pots here. So there's a ballista right over there. You can, ooh, yeah, you can see the crap out of him. That's gonna blow up. And then there's another one right there. So the plan is to kill the guys mounting them using aiming and mighty shot on our longbow. The goal is to not miss twice and hit them in the head. It should kill or at least get very close. If they remount it, just hit them with a normal shot, but this one is kind of... He switched to just using a crossbow. Interestingly enough, what the heck? <laughs> I guess we'll just shoot him normally then. I'd rather take a crossbow shot to the face than a ballista shot. And we're gonna do the same thing to this guy. Just barely... Yeah, he's not the best shot. Just barely peek our ugly mug over here and try to shoot him. See if we can get a shot right here. No, that's super high angled. Aim lower. Mighty shot seems to have a really high angle to it. Right about there. That should do. Now we can get back to using normal shots. Seems like once you hit them, they just can't remount. Ouch. They just can't remount the crossbow. With ballista, they switch to the crossbow. Well, that took more arrows than I wanted it to. But that's the way to handle this without just praying. You can jump across here and get the loot if you are so inclined. There is more over there too, but we'll come across this way. Grab this item, it's called the Trina's Lily. Later on we can make sleep status items using these lilies. I don't know if we will. I don't usually think about that kind of stuff. I'm very brutish, but I still collect these things in case I ever feel like developing a strategy. Now we're gonna jump over this wall where the ballista was and figure out what this is. I don't really remember. The Arbalest. Arbalest. Arr, maybe a pirate. What is the Arbalest? Just a crossbow? What's the description? Large crossbow made from composite materials, one of the largest of all bolt firing devices. The limbs are more pliable than metallic ones, allowing bolts fired from this weapon to pierce even helms forged of steel. Well, that sounds nice, but I don't believe you. We do have, however, a lot of bolts, so I might replace the bow with this temporarily. It's like two pounds heavier. It means I might have to take my armor off, but I do have a lot of bolts. Ballista bolts. <laughs> Oh, that's right. Maybe we'll have to use cannons at some point. But now that we've taken those guys out, we can go ahead and come down here and back to the stairwell. We should have a couple of these guys to deal with. Oh, huh. okay. I was standing still, but Axeman has suddenly decided to aggro on me. Works for me. We'll just get to stabbing him properly. The Axeman is pretty easy to deal with, but if you hit him too many times, he does suddenly develop poise and he'll start attacking without being staggered. You know what? Yeah, I think I will replace the bow. First, I'm going to have to replace my booties with something else. Paying the price. And now we have the Arbalest. I don't think I've ever used this thing before. What is its range? 42. That's bad. But that's also the answer to life, the universe, and everything. Oh, you know what? He was able to hit. Surprising. We could just use crossbows. Never have to invest into dexterity or anything to upgrade. They just do weaker damage, but the bolts are easier to make. I can just wildly fire. <laughs> I don't have to think about it. Because it's cheap. I can also use my shield. <laughs> you know, this is an entire playthrough idea. I've never used sword and cross or board and crossbow. Just sounds weird. Very doable, but weird. Even better if you can make them poison or fire or something. Now, once you get to the top here, you don't want to sprint out immediately because of that guy. Yeah, he's got a flamethrower. You wait for him to stop, and then you run through. Yeah, you might have to roll. The timing's a little weird. Then you stab him in the booty hole a few times. Then there's another flamethrower guy up there. 
If you want to, you can not shoot a crossbow bolt into the ground. If you two-hand a crossbow, you can then aim with it like it's a normal bow. Let's see if it has that same weird upward arch the other one did. Nope, good. Then we're gonna go ahead and shoot him until he's dead. Crazy, right? There's a couple other crossbow guys here, but we don't have to worry about too much. We're probably about to piss off the entire place, which is fine. But we're gonna stand here for a moment. Some enemies are gonna lower themselves over here, like that torch guy. Or if we want to, we could start picking them off with the crossbow. Yeah, sure, we'll do that. I love being able to actually do this, so you don't have to initiate fights with multiple enemies at once. Even, ouch. Listen, buddy, that's not okay. You don't just throw things at people. Let's see how you like it. Yeah, not much, huh? That's what I thought. Let's get these two with another bomb, too. Get them. Two for one. Bandits on sale. Let's go ahead and creep our way to the edge here by this tree. Step behind it. Now we're gonna start stabbing some bandits in the booty hole. Maybe not. They all immediately knew where I was <laughs> as soon as I crossed the barrier. Interesting how that works. i just shoot this one with the arbalest till he is dead. Pretty nice that you can just keep strafing. Ooh. Uh oh, uh oh, stinky. You can jump and use a crossbow, it just sucks. Okay, we're gonna kill this guy first. You're being a pest. You must pay the price. Uh oh, we're gonna die. Chug. It's okay to just take a few bolts to the face. Again, we are technically running a tank. I just don't always play like it. Sometimes my brain defaults to rogue or mage. Let's get back to clearing the place out. Again, it's a good idea to kill these guys as many as you can before we move forward. There's a chance to get smithing stone twos, which are very valuable. They're surprisingly difficult to get. You'll have an easier time getting smithing stone threes. Well, it's a couple of these guys off in the corner here. Might be good to switch back to the crossbow. Nah, we'll just stab them. As long as the crossbow guy is also roughly at that 45 degree angle of the shield. Look at this other guy sitting here. There we go. 410 booty hole damage. This guy on the flamethrower to the side here is just ignoring everything. He is locked in. He has a job and he's not- oh, no, he let someone distract him. I was gonna let him live, but he ruined it. Too bad for you. I'm gonna hit up these stairs here. I don't remember what's up here, actually. We're about to find out. It appears to be a man with an axe. That's okay. We're just gonna stab him to death. Gotta love how gory it gets when the bleed proc occurs. A little bit of fire arrow. Doesn't hurt, I guess. Should make more fire bombs. These things are pretty good, actually. Let's head down these stairs. What is down here? I see rats and a fog gateway. I don't think I'm interested in any of this. Yeah, we're not gonna do that. Behind that fog gate is some prayer items for faith players, which, well, I'm not, so I'm just going to ignore it. I'm going to run through this little battlefield and start collecting things. Magic grease, gold rune. What do we have? More gold runes. Snackable souls are always good. A spear. Spoldering booterfly. Hold on, the pike. Where is the pike? Right here. 115 base damage. That's pretty good. A little heavy. You wanted to, you could run this build with a spear instead. And I'm sure you can see how <laughs> that could be. Far more convenient. This takes almost two to three times the amount of stamina as a rapier. However, it has like two to three times the range. So it's up to you to decide which method you want to go with. I'll stick with the rapier just because it's lighter. We're going to make our way up into this other little stairway. See what's here. It appears to be a wooden great shield. I don't remember. Is that like an actual great shield or no? 91 physical damage negation. Some great shields in this game are actually great. Others are. Well, actually not. Down there, we have a man and his dog, and we want the dog to not exist. So I think we're actually just going to shoot the dog. Yeah, we are. Shoot that dog until it's dead. Or until it approaches. Then that'll separate dog from man. No longer best friends. You can keep neandering, dog. I've got nothing but time. You're almost dead. Two shots to go. You can buffer the crap out of the shot for the crossbow. Anyways, dog is dead. Now it's just us versus man. Hi, man. We're gonna fight. Well, he doesn't do too much stamina damage. You could probably just sword and board this guy for the most part. Just take your time between attacks. This guy can also be backstabbed. So, keep that in mind. You can just strafe around him with a shield until he does something stupid. <laughs> he does attack pretty relentlessly, though. You want to get your licks in and then just get away. There we go. Big slow attack means you can get him in the back. Easy peasy. You just trade blows, essentially. You wait for him to attack and you attack at the same time. That's how you sneak in the easy win. Grab this painting. I don't know what for. I just, I always grab it. Why wouldn't I? Is there anything behind the painting? Ah, a table. I'm gonna break it. Rest in peace, table. Now that we've gone through all of this, we're gonna grab the looty loot loot. 
over here for a calling finger remedy, of course. I guess we could touch this statue. We're going to come over here and touch some grass. We can feel free to rest at it and reset the area. There's no real downside right now. If you have level ups to apply, you might want to do that now. Actually, can I... Oh, I can apply Ashes of War to the bow, but not the crossbows. Too bad. Rest in spaghetti. Hmm, should I keep... Yeah, I think I'll just keep the bleed on the rapier. It's not doing great damage, but when we come across things that are actually tanky, the bleed procs are very nice. Very nice indeed. But this has been episode 6 of the Elden Ring series. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. I will see you in the next episode. But for now, goodbye.